미소에 난 취한 것 같아 자꾸만 웃음이 나 어린아이 장난 같아 Hello friends and welcome back. We are going to start off this week's What's for Dinner with this delicious creamy chicken and broccoli skillet. This was absolutely delicious. I'm already excited to make it again. All right, here in my skillet I have one boneless skinless chicken breast that I just filleted into thinner pieces and pounded out. I am seasoning it with the Trader Joe's Green Goddess Seasoning. We are really liking that. I am just going to pan fry this in a little bit of olive oil. Got my little screen on there because I'm telling you, I'd like to keep my stove clean and um, then you go to cooking and it just makes a mess. So that does help a little bit though. But I flip these after about four or five minutes on each side, season the other side that I had not seasoned yet. And I am being pretty careful to monitor my chicken so I don't overcook it. So I use my little meat thermometer and get it to where it's just done and not overcooked and after that is removed I'm going in with some butter now the recipe I am following called for cream cheese and I decided to use this chive and onion that's what I decided to use and it did provide great flavor the recipe just called for you know regular cream cheese but I had that and wanted to use it and then it also called for chicken broth and heavy cream I was out of heavy cream actually I wasn't out I just didn't want to use the rest of what I had because that's what James uses in his coffee so if you use butter and milk that kind of is a heavy cream um, sort of substitution and it works just great so I went in there with some black pepper and um, that's just simmering there and getting thicker as it does now the recipe said you could just cook your broccoli right in this but I just decided to go ahead and steam it in the microwave so it would be done and I wouldn't have to you know worry about it needing to stay in this sauce and the sauce cooking longer so broccoli in the pool chicken back in the pool and I'm just gonna let this kind of simmer here for just a few minutes to let the flavors kind of intensify and of course that like I said that creamy sauce is thickening as it goes and then I just had some freshly shredded cheddar cheese I shredded myself put this on the top here and put on the lid now I found this recipe I was just looking up James wanted to do some low carb meals for a few days so I just looked up low carb dinner ideas and found this recipe I will have it down below I cannot wait to make this again we didn't serve it with anything we ate it just like this but it would be great served over rice or egg noodles this was delicious well it's family night otherwise why would I have such a big old pile of potatoes right look at the size of these things these were the biggest potatoes i have ever seen and i wasn't expecting that when i picked them up at the grocery store that day um, kroger had the eight pound bag of jumbo baking potatoes on sale for 2.99 so was like what a great deal well i was not expecting them to be this jumbo so instead of just doing baked potatoes i thought you know what this would be perfect for like a twice baked potato and i don't ever make those i've made them but it's been so many years but it just that just came to mind it was not my plan but i i thought instead of just regular pota baked potatoes because these were so huge i thought twice baked potatoes would be really great with these so i baked these in the oven they did take a little while because they were so big and I was since I had kind of changed my plan for the twice baked potatoes I was kind of running on a time frame here though so I thought you know I'm gonna have to get into these while they're steaming hot otherwise I could have let them cool down just a little bit more but I just wanted to get into them get them cut open so they could cool so I could scoop them out and start making my twice baked potatoes so that's what I'm doing here I've got a, a little cloth to kind of keep my hands from burning off and um, 
just slicing these like this letting them cool and we will start the process of making these twice baked potatoes i did look up a recipe like i said it's been so long since i've made them and the recipe said these are great for uh, to make ahead and put in the freezer for like a freezer meal so i thought okay that's a great idea as well we didn't um, do that with any of our leftovers i sent some home with the kids and um, i think i kept a couple here and uh, they were just great as leftovers but i think this would be really a good thing to make ahead and have in your freezer like if you're going to have a party or or cooking for a crowd you could get these done ahead of time so once they are cooled down and i was able to work with them i just want to gently go in here and get the inside of the potato out um, as gentle as i can to not break apart or tear the outside of the potato because once all of these great ingredients are going to go in here and this gets mixed they're going to go right back in so stick of butter a thing of cheese some sour cream and chive um, some sour cream with chives rather some garlic plenty of salt potatoes can use a lot of salt and um, going in here with my handy dandy meat chopper i use this thing for so many uh, reasons in my kitchen it works perfect and i am just going to Kind of get this combined and mixed i don't want a mashed potato consistency i want them a little chunkier um, i went back in and added the rest of the sour cream and i'll just say this air on the side of um, more moisture than not so plenty of sour cream butter you could even do mayonnaise you just don't want these to be dry it's kind of like when you have a baked potato um, and you you know you just don't always seem to have enough butter or sour cream, especially when you're out um, at a restaurant. They just don't bring you enough. So when you're making your mixture, make sure you have plenty of moisture there for those potatoes. And then you're just going to go back in and start, you know, portioning this out to where every shell of the potato is going to be filled with about the same amount. Once I got this all done, I went back in with just some additional things on top, a little bit of extra shredded cheese. I had fried up some bacon earlier, and then later on I put green onions on the top as well. These were absolutely delicious. Once this part's done, you wanna get them back in the oven, bring everything up to temperature. So, so good, a little extra effort, but delicious. All right, here's my plate. On this night, we had a just a grill out my son Riley suggested everybody bring whatever they wanted on the grill and throw it on so I was like okay we don't ever do that that would be great so I made some sides that's my plate here with my steak my potato and some shells and cheese I just took the box shells and cheese there and everyone was getting into this before I could even remember to film um two of our sons had been on a four day fast and they broke their fast with this meal. So they, I mean, they were hungry, ready to dig in. Those are some salmon bites that someone grilled up. We did some hot dogs for the kids. So since I didn't have a very good uh, video clip to show you of what was on the counter, I just went around and said, hey guys, show me your plate. What do you have on your plate? And um, it was just so, so good. We had some dinner rolls and um, nobody left hungry this night. We enjoyed every bit of this. Next up, I am making us a homemade pizza. It's been so long since we've had pizza of any kind and since I've made it at home. So here in the skillet, I have a combination of ham, Bob Evans spicy sausage and onion. I'm taking the help from Trader Joe's and I am using this ready to bake garlic and herb pizza dough. It is delicious. I pulled out some pepperoni, some banana pepper rings, some cheese, and I decided to make my own pizza sauce this night because I didn't have any ready made. And honestly, this is so much better. I just need to make it all the time, but so easy it is a can of tomato sauce tomato paste some sugar some garlic some italian seasoning 
garlic yeah garlic powder and garlic it does call for like basil and but the Italian seasoning covers it all now the little recipe that I go when I used to blog um, that's where what that is from but I will have it linked down below of course it is so easy it makes enough for two pizzas so I usually use you know I'm only usually making one so whatever is left I put it in just a little sandwich bag and put it in the freezer for the next time around it thaws out perfectly so that's that's a great little trick to have so yeah I'm just putting the stuff that we have or what sounded good this night I think that's what's so great about making pizza at home it's just however you want it whatever sounds good to you so I'm using my new little pizza pan here that I picked up at Aldi not long ago for $3.99 it worked out great look at this just delicious and we enjoyed it thoroughly it's quick and easy and like I said just fix it up how you want it and you know it's gonna hit the spot Now we've talked about this on my channel before if you were here you might remember I am making a small pot of chili and we talked about do you follow a recipe for chili or do you wing it most everybody said in the comments that they wing it well that's what I do so we've started off here with ground beef green pepper and onion garlic we've got our seasonings here we have some chili powder and chipotle pepper we are just seasoning this thing up a little bit and um yeah i i make uh chili however the mood strikes me or whatever i have now is that risky maybe you may not get it to taste as good as you did the time before but you know what we pretty much know what we like and it usually turns out great every time now tonight I'm adding some little cherry tomatoes. I had some of those left needed to be used. I cut them in half and threw them in. I also am going to add in some chili beans. Uh, I love to add chili beans. Of course you don't drain those because they have so much great flavor that is part of the chili bean itself. Uh, the way it's packed with all the seasonings, perfect for chili. So I'm going to throw those in as well. Next up, instead of a V8 or a traditional tomato juice, which I don't always add both, either one of those, but this time I had this in my refrigerator. I had this when we were flying to Florida, a little can of, I asked for tomato juice and this is what they gave me. Talk about flavorful. It is so, so good. So I had some of that in my refrigerator. I knew this would be perfect in this chili. I do like to add a V8 every now and then. I don't do it always, but this added so much great flavor. And then I also went in with just a little bit of beef broth, the just the, the bouillon powder. And then what's making this different tonight, I am using angel hair pasta. Now I know that's very controversial, it seems, whether you have pasta in your chili or not. 99% of the time we do not but this is what I wanted this night years ago a friend had us over for a game night and she made a pot of chili and she had like long spaghetti in it and it reminded me of every now and then my mom would make it that way as a kid and I rarely rarely do it but that's what I wanted this night and let me tell you it was so so good all of these flavors together were spot on and then just adding in that angel hair pasta, it just checked all the boxes and a few extra. It was that, that good. So good. I like to have American cheese in my chili. That's how we had it growing up. Actually, it was like Velveeta. 
um, is what we would usually have. So I just stuck a slice of American cheese in there. I have some crackers down here on the bottom. This is, to me, this is an old school chili. Um, like I said, reminded me of how my mom would make it sometime. This was so good. My mouth is watering just looking at it. Topped it off here with just a little bit of red pepper flakes and dug in. It was perfect. Now the last few things I'm going to show you are some things that I made and took to church recently. So I'm starting off here making these Reuben sliders. So we are using our beloved King's Hawaiian Rolls for sliders. These things are just top notch. I have the little Hillshire Farms pastrami. I had some Swiss cheese and I'm going to top it all off with sauerkraut and the sauce. The secret sauce here is made by Great Value and it's basically like a Big Mac sauce which I knew would taste just great on these Reuben sliders. So easy peasy. I went ahead and split all the rolls apart that way they would just be easier to take out as we are going through the line at church. We have a shared uh, meal, a fellowship meal each Sunday, and um, sliders are always great anytime. I had not planned on making the ham and cheese sliders, but I had the stuff and I had the time that morning, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to put together um, ham and sl cheese sliders up as well. And I've taken these plenty of times. This might only be the maybe second or third time I've made the um, Reuben sliders, they were a big hit as well. But with the ham and cheese sliders, I just did a little bit of mustard, a little bit of mayonnaise. These can be so flexible. You can put, you know, what you prefer. You can change up the cheese, the sauces, whatever. And then for uh, the topping for these, it's just part of what makes these so great is the buttery topping. Now, for the Reuben sliders, I just wanted to use plain butter. I didn't want to season the butter or add anything to it. I just wanted plain butter for these and then for the ham and cheese sliders i love to put the butter sauce that has the brown sugar the worcester and the mustard so that's what i added to remaining butter that i had here in the bowl just a little bit of each of those ingredients flavors this up so much and it's just a bunch of yummy sticky messy goodness on top of these little ham and cheese sliders so I have these on the same pan here, but I was just careful to try to keep the sweeter type of buttery topping, you know, just over there on the side with the ham and cheese sliders. And then what you do is just stick these in the oven when it's time, you know, the time to eat them so they'll heat through. I just use this Trader Joe's Green Goddess again. I like to add a little something on the top of these to make them look pretty. And so, yeah, I took these to church, popped them in the oven before the meal, and they flew off the pan. Okay, now what this is, is just like an oven fried chicken. This is something I hadn't done before. I used chicken thighs. The recipe said to leave the skin on to season them up with your favorite seasonings and olive oil and they just sort of fry in the oven. I don't have a finished picture to show you. I did take these to church. I just got them all seasoned up and ready and baked them when I got to church. These were a really big hit. They crisped up. They were very good. I definitely will make chicken like this again. So I just wanted to show you this as an idea and I'll have the recipe down below. Another thing that I made recently and took to church were these delicious honey glazed carrots. I just used some onion salt and went in with a fair amount of honey and butter, baked these in the oven and they were delicious. I will link this recipe below as well. And for any others that I've shared today, look down below in the description um, for all the recipes. All right, you guys, this is it. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you've not, and I'll see you the next time. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Music